Good morning. Um, thank you for your trek to make it up here through four escalators and, and all of it. Uh, my name is Tom Robinson. Uh, I'm a salesman. Proud of it. I love sales. Um, I'm with AO Sales. Uh, we are the Midwest distributor of uh, Eclipse sinks and faucets. And I understand selling granite is hard. The only thing I can think of harder than selling granite is selling sinks right now. So, um, I was visiting a customer a few months back, uh, and I noticed on my sales report that their sales were falling off. So I walked into their showroom, and it's a nice little showroom, and it's got all the right stuff. And I walked to the back of this little office where the salesperson has her office. And I said good morning, and she looked up and reduced the uh, solitaire she was playing, and uh, talked with me very warmly. She was we got very friendly over the years, and we talked for a few minutes, and then I said, uh, Sally, I noticed that your sales are falling off. What's going on? She says, oh, it's terrible. We haven't had a sale in six weeks. I said, well, what's happening? She said, well, nobody's walking in the door anymore. So then I asked her the question that any sales professional would ask, well, what are you doing to bring people in the door? And she got this look of absolute horror on her face. She said, you mean like cold calling? I can never do that. Well, you guys make granite countertops. I don't mean to pick on anybody, but when you make a granite countertop, OK, you want me to do it here? <laughs> when you make a granite countertop, you have a process for it. And it's probably something like you order the slab, and then you go do a template, and you make a drawing, and you lay it out, and you rough cut it, and then you fine cut it, and cut the sink out and polish the edge or something like that, right? Okay, you have a process. And if I, if I asked you to do a seminar, you could do 45 minutes on that. Okay? I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you had oh, to. Okay. You could. You have a process for making tops. And if you start on Monday morning making a top, by Tuesday afternoon you have a top. Okay? Sales is just like that. It's a process. You have to have a process. You have to follow the steps. Now, you can do everything wrong and still have a, a sale. And you can do everything right and not have a sale. So it's not like I can start my sales process on Monday morning and Tuesday afternoon I have a sale. But you have to find the process. If you do the right things at the right time, more sales will come. Nothing here we're going to talk about. Now, all of you, if we are in a sales uh, a seminar with the title says, uh, a sales seminar for people who hate sales. So let's assume you're not real fond of selling. Um, but you've probably heard everything I'm going to talk about at one point or another. There's nothing new. Everything I'm going to talk about is in books. Uh, I've been doing it for 30 years. Uh, a lot of the stuff I've learned that I put in this presentation came from my customers with their permission. They, they, they shared ideas with me, particularly on prospecting. Um, I see who's busy, so I ask them what's going on, and they tell me. Some guys think all that's a secret and they don't want to share it, so I haven't. Nothing in here is came from anybody who told me not to share it. It's only people who have agreed to share it. Um, if you hate sales, there's probably one of three reasons you hate sales. When I say salesperson to you, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Pushy. Okay? Anybody else? Pressure. Exactly. Okay? Salespeople have a terrible reputation. And the problem is not with professional salespeople. The problem is many sales practitioners are longtime amateurs who occasionally stumble on a sale. A true salesperson is not pushy or dishonest or wear too much cologne or shiny suits or jewelry or have slick back hair. Sometimes they don't have any hair at all. Um, a true sales professional is honest, helpful, dresses like the customer. You don't, I don't wear a, a three-piece suit to call on you. A dress like the customer and always has the customer's interest first. Now repeat that. Always has the customer's interest first. If you have the customer's interest first, you're going to make more sales. Okay, a couple of um, points about, oh, the last reason you probably hate sales is if you hate sales, you probably don't like, don't hate all sales. You may not mind talking to the customer about 
you know, your product, you're talking about your product and the nice edge and the nice finish and granite is wonderful and it's the hardest thing in nature and all the things you guys do. And the customer then looks at you and says, well, I heard they're all, uh, uh, granite is radioactive. Oh, pushes you back. You get defensive. You haven't, you're, you're great at selling, but you're not great at um, overcoming objections. I was a, bu a home builder for over 20 years, and I was terrific. I was the best salesman in the world in my own mind. I can, turn, I can convert 8 out of 10 people that I got in front of to a sale. The problem was I wasn't co comfortable prospecting, and so I didn't get in front of enough people to sell enough. So if you hate sales, it's probably you hate one or more of the steps. You don't hate the whole process. A couple things about sales. First of all, I have over 100 tapes, CDs, that I uh, listen to as I travel the Midwest over and over again. And almost every one of them starts with a section on sales as an honorable profession. You suppose if you were at a, uh, a seminar for brain surgeons or rocket scientists or even bus drivers, they'd have to convince you it's an honorable profession. It is an honorable profession. Nothing happens unless somebody, somebody sells something. Sales is not an option. If you are in business, you are in sales. You have to sell it. You make a good countertop? Absolutely. Okay. If you make a good countertop, it's your duty to get it into the hands of people who are going to use it. Your customers benefit from your product. It's your duty to do it. And if you use that attitude in your sales, that you're helping the customer, not trying to push something over on them, you won't be pushy. You won't be uh, dishonest. When you're, we're looking at the, the, the process, all the things you're going to have, you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to work on the hard things. If you're good at of overcoming objections, you have to work on the prospect. You have to work on the parts of the process that you are not good at, not just the parts that are comfortable. Sales is not a part-time activity. You don't ask your lead fabricator to do the bookkeeping or greet people coming to your showroom, do you? No. Okay. How many of you ask your bookkeeper or your uh, receptions to do sales? A employee, given the option, will do routine easy tasks instead of the hard necessary tasks. If you have a bookkeeper who's also doing your sales and she's got a, a, a stack of bills to enter and a list of cold calls or, or follow-up calls to make, well, you know, if she starts just like you're making the top, she starts in the, those, entering those bills by the end of the day, she's going to she's have a little to accomplish something. She starts making cold calls. People are going to reject her, say, you know, uh, say no to her. It's harder to do it. So an employee will always do the routine, routine, excuse me, routine easy task instead of the hard necessary task. So it's important to have a full-time person. If they're not doing anything else, they're out selling. They're out finding more customers. And finally, nothing happens until somebody sells something. I don't care if you got the best top of the world. If you don't sell it to somebody, nothing's going to happen. I'm a little technically challenged, guys, so excuse me. There's the sales process. We're going to talk about each one of these items and see if we can't demystify it and, and help you out with each one of them. First, fine-tune your production and process. At Disney World, outside of the, the black room where Outside the locker room where all, where all the characters dress, there's a big sign that says, take pride in the product. Because they understand that even if the guy playing Donald Duck is having a bad day, the guests coming to the uh, park, it may be a once in a lifetime experience for them. So they have to make it fresh and exciting every single day. Your countertop is going to be in the people's homes for a very long time representing you. If your guy had a bad day, that customer doesn't care that they had a bad day and, and didn't quite polish it right or didn't quite cut it straight. You have to make sure that your process is delivering uh, the best countertop you can make every single time because it's out representing you. What is your product? Can I, I'm sorry, I'm picking on you. What's your name? Jesse. Jesse. Jesse, what's your product? Car house. Yes and no. Your product is not just a countertop, and that goes for everybody. Your product is the entire experience from the day the person first makes contact with your company until the day they're sitting drinking coffee at the countertop and forgot the countertop wasn't always there. 
Okay? How is your phone answered? And how is it answered when you're not there? Does it say, does your automatic answer say Merry Christmas in July? Is it scratchy? How to call yourself? See what it says. Are your salespeople, do they dress neat and, and, and dress like their customer? Okay, are they available when the customer needs them? I have a customer that can't understand why they never get enough sales. Their showroom is open from 10 to 1 on Monday and Tuesday, and 1 to 3 on Wednesday and Thursday. How do you do that? Okay. Um, so are your salespeople, if you don't have salespeople that are willing to do Friday nights or Saturday or Sunday or be available when the customer needs them, because everybody's got two jobs, to, you know, both, uh, a husband and wife both work now. So if you don't have people that will get there when the customer needs them, uh, big problem. What's your slab selection process like? If you are sending your customers to the granite wholesale to pick out slabs, unescorted, some of them are going to be stolen. And you don't know what that person is, is talking. They may be selling your customer uh, leftovers, what they can't sell to anybody else. So you have to make sure that your slab selection process is customer friendly. How are you doing that? And look at the whole process, everything you're doing, uh, to make sure that you're doing the best possible, make the, not only the countertop, but the whole process uh, customer friendly. Several uh, months ago, we had a big storm in Chicago, and uh, we lost trees. There was trees over my driveway, and the trees on my hanging on my electrical wires. And we called up a tree service, and he came out and saved my electrical lines and got me out of the driveway. Did a wonderful job. But he told me he was going to rake up and get all the debris. Well, he didn't rake up the debris, and he trampled my wife's peonies. Well. It was a storm. Half the neighborhood needed a, uh, a tree cutter. And they came, they saw the truck and they came and asked us uh, after he was gone. And my wife said, well, he did a wonderful job, saved the bush. But you know what, look at the mess and look at my poor bushes. Six people called us and asked about uh, a tree service. None of them went to that tree service. Now, that tree guy never heard the complaint. If your standard is, well, I didn't hear any complaints, it's a pretty low standard. You have to not only not get complaints, you have to make that customer delighted. So you don't have to ask referral. If he'd cleaned up and, and done it, I'd been delighted to give his name. I would have told called my friends that had the need tree service. And that's where you gotta be. Now, if you're using uh, commercial grade granite, if you're waxing the edges instead of polishing, if you're cutting corners, um, I promise not to talk about sinks, but if you're using some of the cheap sinks out there instead of a good sink, uh, you may never hear the complaint. But your customers, friends, and relatives will. Your prospects will hear about your product. Okay, unique selling proposition. Why should I buy your countertop compared to your competition? <laughs> Did, would you, would you, was that answer before you came here today? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I preach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Why, why, why should I buy from account? Anybody? Okay. Everybody has something you do better than everybody else. If you do the process, uh, that's terrific. The last time I did this uh, particular talk, somebody said, oh, we have the best quality in town. Okay. I have... Uh, uh, up in Wisconsin, Wisconsin is my best territory, so a lot of my stories are about Wisconsin. There's a little industrial park, and there's three granite fabricators on the same lot. And for years, they got along because, you know, there was enough work to go around, they shared the work. And then a few years ago, when the, the market got bad, the first guy puts up a sign on his uh, showroom, best countertops in town. Well, about two weeks later, the next guy puts a sign twice as big and twice as tall. Best countertops in Wisconsin. So now everybody's watching the third guy. What is he going to do? Month, six weeks goes by. Sign shows up. It's shorter than the first one and, and more modest than the first one. It's smaller. It says, best countertops on the block. And we can prove it. And if you went in there and talked to him, he had a binder about every step in his process. 
He talked about, it, you couldn't read the darn thing. He would talk about the, the, his bridge saw, and it's got a diamond cut blade and it's precision this. He took it right out of the brochure from the, the bridge saw. And he did that with each step of his process. He talked about the pad, the polishing pads and the, all the different things. And he had this book that he created about all the things that he did. And then at the back, he had a, a whole a bunch of pages of letters and, and cards and, and things from his customers. Some of them he solicited from his customers, saying, oh, we, you know, we love our new countertop, everything was what the process was good. Uh, all these letters. And then he had a page of all the awards he won. And a lot of those awards were those, you, know, you guys know that you've entered the Home Builders Association, you get the award if you just show up. But he had the plaques on the wall and he had a list of all the awards in his book. So he had a reason. If you say you're the best quality, you, first of all, you better define what that means. You know, how many pages, you know, what's this top going to look like, what this seems going to look like. Make that definition, live up to that, and then have a way to prove it because everybody says their product is the best. So you have to find something unique. If you don't have a unique selling proposition, the only thing you can sell on is price. Some ideas for unique selling propositions. Do you have uh, a, a quartz manufacturer that nobody else has? Do you have a slab selection that nobody else has? I have a, a guy, uh, a customer of mine, in a very small town, and he, he specializes and he goes by his orphans, one and two leftover slabs that, that don't match anything else, and he buys them, and he has a list of about 75 color neutral names. Weather, I don't remember all the names, but they don't, and so he buys the uh, two slabs of whatever, and he, the first one is number one on his list, it's weather, and the second one, and names them from 75, okay? And number one, all the grand wholesalers might be calling that Uba Tuba, but he's calling it weather. And when he gets to the last, he, when he gets to the end of the 75 list, he starts over. It could be a totally different slab. Now, if you have a customer that's come in and picked out weather, and they call up the granite wholesaler trying to buy weather, the guy says, well, we don't have anything like that. And if they do figure out that, well, weather is Uba Tuba, six weeks down the line when he's done that, gone through the list, it's a brand new one. So he makes his own, um, by naming it himself, they can't buy those slabs anyplace else. They may be if they go look at it, but he's got it. So some way you've got to find unique selling what do you do you need? Uh, perhaps you can deliver, you know, three-day delivery, five-day delivery. Or if you're busy and you have six weeks delivery and somebody comes in and says, uh, well, guy on the street's giving it to me and got seven-day delivery. Say, oh, well, we'd love to do it in seven days, but you know, we do everyone, uh, all our tops with such precision and we want to make sure that everybody's happy because when we're done, we want you to be telling all your friends and neighbors to come back to us. So, you know, thank goodness we're so busy, but it's six weeks out. But you know what? Even we're six weeks out. I'm not. I'm, we're so worried about quality that we're not going to rush your slab. And I'm sorry it's six weeks out. But other guys aren't busy because they aren't doing their job right. Not mentioning names. <laughs> but um, so his unique selling properties is, is I'm so busy because I do such a good job that it takes six weeks to get my product. So. If you have a CNC machine, and nobody in town has a CNC machine, well, maybe your unique, unique selling proposition is the precision of CNC. If you are <coughs> cutting when everybody else has got a CNC, now you talk about your hand craftsmanship. I have a great customer in Galesburg, Illinois. And the, the video's on our uh, uh, YouTube page, eclipsedstainless.com forward slash, I'm sorry, youtube.com forward slash eclipsedstainless. And I made a little video, and I, I said, well, what, what's unique about your slabs? And he said, oh, well, I make sure that these fit the mood of the customer, and it fits the aura of the kitchen. And by the time he got done, I said, geez, get a room. <laughs> but that's what sells. That was his unique selling proposition. In his town, people wanted him, because he was an art major, and he made you love that slab. So you have to find it. what the unique selling proposition is is up to you and what you do better than everybody else. Now, you also may need two. If you're competing, if, if half your customers are coming from the big wholesaler, you know, mass produced guys, and half are coming from the garage guy, you may have to have 
two different, uh, you've made selling propositions for different customers. 